Welcome to Annalise's Revenge, written by Renly Farr and Jeff C. Stevens. This is a follow-up to Happy Jack, and we will find out more about Annalise. She was mentioned in Happy Jack briefly, um, in the story anyway. I don't know if you guys met her. I totally remember, yeah. She was his girlfriend that Reaver sent away. It was a love of his life. And who was Reaver again? Reaver was the uh, crone, the hag. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, okay. Yes, so Reaver wanted control of Jack. Jack met Annalise. They fell in love. Reaver was not happy about Jack's split attention, so she got rid of Annalise. And now this is Annalise's revenge. I'm sure we can work out whatever misunderstanding has come up between her and the party. It's going to be yeah. fine. It's more of a therapy session. I mean, quite yeah. frankly, I, I think we did Happy Jack a bit of a service by putting him down. He was pretty far gone, really. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I think that that will probably be uh, well-received. <laughs> Look, I, I'm playing. I am recurring. Jacques is recurring as he usually does whenever Emily is uh, running the game, and Jacques is still traumatized from Little Jacques. Like that was not a fun time for him. Okay, he has no sympathy for Happy Jack. So you are playing Little. You're playing Jacques. <laughs> I know. I will never play Little Jacques. No, <laughs> full size Goblin Jacques, which is little. <laughs> and Elena, you are Pam. I'm Pam. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, you know, just a Midwesterner mom trying to take care of everybody. And Bill? Booch is making his triumphant return to spread the love of nature and spores and just having a good time. And John? I am playing Nunda Weiser, one of my characters from many, many years ago. EverQuest. Yeah, he, 20 years ago, in, in his backstory, he traveled the world of Evercast Quest, and since he took up the fighting arts to keep his joints nice and limber. <laughs> ah. A body in motion stays in motion. It's yeah. true. That's right. Booch also likes to do some stretching and, uh, you know, some yoga from time to time. Until you hit the airbag, and then... <laughs> Well, the whoever's body that you hit is probably still in motion, <laughs> at least for a little bit after it. <laughs> okay, so you have all come to the town of Incorringington to see the play called Revenge, A Tragedy in Two Acts by Annalise Penn. But when you arrive, you see the Levelion Opera House is barred, with militia out front blocking anyone from being able to go inside. There is one woman that seems to be directing the rest of the guards to secure the area and keep the onlookers from getting close to the building. What do you want to do? What town are we in? In Corrington. And I assume we all know each other. I'm, I'm new to the group. I'm a, I'm a gnome. I'm only standing three foot tall. Uh, I, I'm bald and uh, old. About 400 <laughs> years old. Uh, so I, I, I assume I know you all from... Prior operas. <laughs> I, 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 I love the opera. <laughs> me too. I'm so excited. Oh, I hope they can give me an autograph. I just, I just love them. Uh, it looks like we got all uh, dressed up for nothing, huh? This color, this city. Uh, Pamela, how did you convince me to put this on? Huh? Well, Jacques, I always like to say that. You come dressed for the best, and if it's not the best, well, then you still look sharp. Ha, <laughs> Bucci, <laughs> you flatter, huh? Uh, let's see what uh, these uh, militia are doing, huh? They're directing people. We can't even get in. They better not cancel a show. <sighs> Maybe there was a mater. What's a mater? <laughs> <laughs> No, not a mater, a mater! <laughs> Very distinctly different, huh? He said mater. I don't, hear, I can't hear. What are, what are you saying? There's a mater! No, a mater. there is a mater! Uh. Every town has a mayor. Excuse me, excuse me. And I'll walk up to one of the militia, <laughs> tap him on the back. Is there a mater? A what? 
A midair. Uh, What's going on? A midair. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I gotta go talk to her. And he points you to a haggard older woman. She seems weary. There are bags under her eyes, as if she hasn't slept in quite a while. But she's still very much in control of the situation out here. Nanda, she's cute, right? Oh, yeah, I like I, I like the bags. Under her eyes, they... If, uh, yeah. if looks could kill her, I think we found the murderer. I think I know who I'm getting together tonight. Uh, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? Nothing. Oh. Hey, are you a murderer? She, she hears the commotion that you guys are causing and she walks over. Yes, I'm Constable Bartha. What do you want? I'm busy. Bartha, that's a, one, that's a beautiful name. Oh, you're, yeah, beautiful, Bertha. Yeah. Uh, what's going Bartha. on? She said Bartha, Pam. Bartha. Oh, you, you heard that, Nanda, huh? You had no trouble hearing that? Yeah, I, I usually pay more attention to, to, to the ladies. Well, yeah, Bartha, meet meet Nanda, my very single friend. Okay, fine, What? whatever. What do you want? What's going on? Uh, we just wanted to see the play, huh? Yeah, the play... It, the opening night was a couple nights ago, and 200 people went in, and nobody came back out. Uh, we, we don't what? know what happened. We, the The next morning, when we realized this, we sent in eight of our most elite, strongest warriors, and they never came out. And this was several days ago now. We, we don't know what's going on in there. S- sounds like you got a problem. All right, guys, let's go home. <laughs> she starts to walk away from you. We can try to help, right? Come on. Come on, guys. Guys. What, you can help? Maybe. I do like a good mystery. We're kind of into adventures. I suppose. Well, uh, it seems to me that these 200 people, huh, they are getting a private show that we are not getting. Shock what I would like this private show. What about the singers and stuff? Like, did everyone disappear? Nobody's come out. We don't know what happened. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody? Nobody. What about any flavorful smells? Are there any smells coming out? We haven't let anybody get close to it. Mm, sometimes the nose knows. <laughs> uh, you haven't said to the, uh, the sniffer dogs, huh? No. We don't have any. Oh, well, maybe Boots can serve as it, huh? Do you have uh, an item, uh, a belonging of each of these 200 people that Boots can sniff and then track them down? That would take too long. Can't you just go in? Jock sometimes gets a little excited. It doesn't quite work like that for me, but I do like to sniff things, especially if they sniff good. <sighs> See? Okay. Uh, there is a reward. The town's put together some money. How much is some? A, a thousand gold pieces. All right, let's go. Nanda, you can take her out for a nice dinner after, eh? Hello, eh? to the door now. Are you coming? Yeah, Booch, Booch will wander over. She will, uh, Cat Constable Bartha will call out after you. Look for Loc- Locus Pavoli. He's he's the manager of the Levleon. He's he's a bit of a jerk, but he knows a lot about the f- theater. Lavlioli Pavoli. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you find him, you might be able to find some answers. Yeah. I open the door. Ah, oh, hold on. I have to get into my my armor, huh? I really wanted to I'm, see a show. I must show. get out of this fine, my, these fine clothes. Just uh, give me uh, five minutes, huh? Uh, uh, well, all right. I'll wait for you here. But I still hold the door open and look in. Yeah, do we see anything when we look in? Let me have a quick, quick little sniff. Booch will go over to the door <laughs> and sort of just lean forward a little bit. I sort of wave my hand behind my back. You might want to wait wait, wait a second. Oh, I'm not going to go in. No, no. The, uh, this, so this will clear out first. Oh, dear. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Nanda, do you, are you nervous? Bartha is cute. I'm uh, sure he is. Would you look at him? I bet he just slips out and he doesn't even know most of the time. I don't know most of the time. <laughs> what, you lose sphincter you, huh? control after 400 years? Sometimes the O-rings kind of lose their elasticity. He didn't live to be so old. Uh, okay, I have my armor on now. Huh? And 
And the, my nice cloak. Uh, let's go. We're going. We're going to look for Luke Leoli. Does Booch smell any sniffs other than Nunda's butt? Before we get to the sniffing, the theater is a two-story opera house. Its pine walls glistening with dark, heavy wood stain. The most prominent feature is a glass window that wraps around the lobby entrance. Jacques, since you weren't eager to sniff and you were changing your armor, you happened to notice all the posters in each of the windows all the way around the outside of the opera house. Each one says, A Revenge, A Tragedy in Two Acts by Annalise Penn. In the background is the same person in different magnificent poses you assume to be Annalise Penn. But in the foreground of each poster is one of you. Ugh. On one poster, it shows Pam playing a beautiful lute. What? The next one has Jacques, two whips slashing out. Another has Nunda Weiser, hands out, fire hurling from his fingertips. And the next is Booch, with a cloud of spores surrounding him. All of you repeat it in sequence all across the front of the building. And Bartha didn't think to mention this to us? Well, none, none of us saw this, right? Just Jock saw this. I saw it. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely point it out. Ah! We are famous! Look! Everyone! I don't remember being in a play. What? Hmm. But I do look pretty nice, so I... I do have a nice butt. They... They certainly did get a good angle of me as well. Oh my. This seems personal. Yeah, I, I wonder how they did this. This is weird. You gonna sniff now? Yes, yes. It smells a bit musty. Musty. Mmm, yes. It it smells like they don't have all that grade of circulation in there, but nothing else that I can sniff out. I I bet you everybody gets a special poster. It's it's magic. Okay, so we're just seeing what we want to see? Yeah, I think it, it, it's got to be an illusion. Uh, I've seen stuff like this before, and it's, it's, it's nothing to worry about. Okay, so everybody sees themselves? I assume. I see me. Well, I see you. So, I mean, maybe it's whoever, the, the next four people or something. Okay, so we're looking for who? Uh, I, I think his name was Lucas. Lucas Pavioli. Pavoli. Pavoli. <laughs> it's a mouthful. All right, who's first? I'm holding the door. Uh, not yet. Well, I'll, I'll. It just a little musty air is not likely to hurt. Let's let's go. So Booch will start to shuffle across the threshold. You walk into the lobby of the opera house. This large area is covered wall to wall with luxurious red carpet. It once catered to the masses waiting to enter the theater, but now is completely devoid of life. Behind you, ten posters for upcoming shows are plastered all along the windows, back to back with the posters on the outside. In front of you, you see two sets of wooden double doors that have ornate flowers, leaves, and vines carved into them. Above the doors are gold painted signs that in a fancy script say performance hall. Off to your right, you see a half wall with a large window in it. Above the window is another gold script sign that says concessions slash box office. Past that, the red carpet continues down a wide hallway. I gotta pee before we go in. <laughs> uh, everybody, uh, give me your tickets, huh? I will rip them and leave these stubs. Uh, I see there's no ticket taker, but uh, we'll, we'll still do what we uh, are supposed to, huh? Uh, I, I got it here somewhere. B Booch, Booch will hand the ticket to Jacques. Here you go. <laughs> all right, I'll tear off the of our stubs and I'll just like drop the stubs on the box office, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm good. I totally get it. I gotta go all the time too. I know where uh, every single Nanda. bathroom is in the city. Yeah. I didn't see you leave to go to the bathroom. Okay, well, let's go in the, the double doors. Is that it? Or are we gonna get something before we go in? Snacks? Ooh, you know what? I have snacks in my purse, so if we get hungry later, I've got them. Got you covered. I always bring some treats as I've well. I've got some prunes for you, Nunda. I know you love those. <laughs> I don't need any prunes. Uh, you might. <laughs> Go right through me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> All right, well, I'm not getting any younger. Let's go. <laughs> this wouldn't be so funny if you weren't, like, a lot older than us. Already. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. So what this you're is, saying is I don't have to act. This it's is just, the future. This is this is what Elena thinks of you is this character. The near future, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I start I start scooching over towards the door. Jacques, after you drop the tickets off, you notice all the posters that are on the inside of the windows. I want to read them out because they're clever. <laughs> you have Tasha's Kiss Stand Up, and across it in big red letters says cancelled. You have To Be King by the Traveling Halflings. One, it says, For One and All, a rock opera by Meta Laika. Greed, I Want to Live Forever by Dem Liches. Timora <laughs> is an Unlucky by Doubtful the Gnome. Long Live Strahd, a personal reflection about living in Barovia by Hempelstead the Mongol Folk. Do You Hear the People <laughs> Scream by The Miserable. Puppets and Marionettes, a discussion by Blinksy of Barovia. Inheritance Rules and Laws by Haggard Tool, and Tiamat Risen, the story that almost was by Amara the Cultist. <laughs> I see uh, they're missing Kekka, huh? She does not perform here. This place is not nice enough for Kekka, I suppose, huh? I know. Jovi, missing out. Okay, so these are great big double doors, like in a, you know... You said... Two sets of double doors with a little bit of wall in between them. They're or very ornate, carved wooden, uh, gleaming, uh, pristine, with really fancy scripted lettering above them that says performance hall. Do we do we knock? Maybe we knock. Oh, it's just how you get in. I reach up, because I'm only three foot tall, and grab the bottom of the handle and sort of shuffle back and open the door up. Okay, so as soon as you touch the door, I need you to give me a wisdom save. Which set of doors are you going to? I'll go to the set on the more, I guess, if up is north, the more northern set of doors there. And I get, uh, if this is against magic, I get advantage. Which doesn't doesn't make any difference, though, because I rolled a 9 with advantage. Okay, you rolled a 9, so roll me a d6, please. This seems bad. Maybe it's just a weather die. <laughs> that would ah. be a D10, Bill. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. They're both mostly the same thing. I'm rooting that low is good because I got a one. A one. So you go to touch the door and this wave of energy emits from it. And you are transformed into an edder cap. <laughs> uh-huh. A who? Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. It's a spider person. None the wiser. What happened? Can I speak or am I as a monstrosity? Uh, when you polymorph transforms somebody, can they speak? It's, a, it's your call. Okay, you have a really low intelligence, so I would say no, you cannot speak. Okay. Uh, guys, that doesn't look good. Is there another way in? And the door is locked. You did not open it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, this seems bad, huh? Uh, I cannot do anything about uh, this transformation. How about you, Pamela? Can you do anything? No, I I don't know. I wasn't prepared for this. Can we just find another way in? I look around and, and cr- climb up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Which wall are you climbing? Uh, over top of the door. It, like I'm just uh, trying out these new features that I've... I'm very inquisitive. The same door? Yeah, the same door. Oh, I'm gosh. Climb up on the wall above it. How high is the ceiling in this room? 40 feet. Oh, I'm going to go all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. This is amazing, Landawiser. Ah, you're going to end up getting squished by someone that doesn't realize you're a gnome. <laughs> oh, well, uh, he is quite large. It would take <laughs> a big someone to squish him, huh? I know big guys. Anyway, okay. How, what are we going to do? Oh, my goodness, Pamela. I do not want to hear this. I don't, gosh, Jock. You've met my hubby. You know he's a big oaf. <laughs> His hands the size of baseball mitts, you know? I was wondering he where could that was <laughs> <laughs> He could smush him. He could smush him. Hey, Bucci, uh, why don't you try, huh? Oh, boy. I guess here goes. Which door are you trying? 
I do have guidance. Can I cast it on myself? Yeah. Touch one willing creature. Are you willing? Well, sometimes. Yeah, so Booch, uh, having seen what just happened, um, suspects that there's something dastardly afoot, and he will cast Guidance on himself to improve his chances of success. So um, John had touched the main the door that says entrance to the... Performance hall, but the northernmost door. There, there are two sets of doors. That's a wall in the middle. So there's a double door, wall, double door. And he touched the northern set of double doors. I'll maybe go to the one that's... Um, further south um, and try the the other doors okay uh oh she's smiling this is bad <laughs> can I can I retroactively change my decision <laughs> well she already said the, the northern one was locked anyways yeah well here we go <laughs> you're touching the other set of doors yeah that's what it sounds like they are also locked but can you give me a wisdom safe please mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Why are all the doors locked? Okay, so I rolled a one on the D four, so that's that's gonna it's gonna really <laughs> it's gonna really help. Ooh, that's a good roll. Okay, roll the seventeen. Okay. And then my wisdom looks like plus seven. Dang. Okay, it's twenty four. Uh plus one. Twenty five. Twenty five. So as soon as you touch the door, there is a wave of energy that pulses out from the door, but nothing happens. And the door is still locked. Hmm. These doors have some sort of magical energy, I think. I could feel it just roll across my body like I'd eaten a really bad spore baby past the due date. Why doesn't somebody give me an intelligence or arcane check? Um, I can probably, John should do that. But not, not as an editor cap. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one who just interacted with it, so I'll do it, I guess. I'll roll Falzerin's and dice for this one because he's a, a master of the arcane arts. Oh, Falzerin. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. 14. You could tell there's some kind of arcane lock on these doors. It's not it's not going to be picked. You need some kind of spell or something to be able to unlock them. Which which Nunda has probably. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> Classic. Well, it reminds you there is a wide hallway to the south. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, But there are Pam, doors right here. I mean, come on, we have to get through these doors. Pam is going to say, I guess we got to find another way in and just kind of walk down the hallway inspecting and looking. The lock on this door seems to be magical. I don't think we're going to get through, or at least not by my abilities. I'd rather not grow six more legs tonight. Yeah, let's let's go around. Or would it be four? Do my arms count as legs if I turn You're coming, Jean? to an etter crap? I uh, was just uh, pondering the question. Pamela posed to the group. All right. <laughs> Maybe later I can give you an answer on that, Pam. Ananda, let's go. Can can I roll a d6 to see if my web recharges? <laughs> Did you shoot your web? <laughs> uh, not yet. I don't. I don't know if uh, I have to recharge on a five or six. So I don't. Do I automatically? Am I automatically full of web right now? Yeah. You're full uh, of web. Yeah, okay. You're, you're all full of web. Web is completely full. Exactly. I'm going to say either by accident or on purpose. I'm going to shoot my web out onto the wall near, uh, near the party. Not to hit them. Just to see how it works. <laughs> Are you still climbing on the wall? I'm up on towards the top of the ceiling. Yeah, I, I'm just checking out these new features that I have. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay, so I okay. do that. Yeah. He's checking uh, out his cute butt. This is actually it's disgusting. I think it sort of starts out by just a small string and dripping down until it gets to be two or three feet long. And then it just all comes out as a big web that sort of hangs onto the wall and falls onto the floor and spreads out a little bit. And I just go... <laughs> Hey, this is the theater. Like, let's not wreck the place. And I just keep walking down the hallway south. You want to describe what you look at, like real quick for those that don't know what an Edercap is? Well, the Edercaps that I've seen, they're, they're sort of a large purple beast with, like, uh, clawed hands. 
Yeah, so it's, it's sort of long, uh, thin arms that reach all the way down to where my feet would be as I as I stand up. Sort of got a big belly and a and a bulbous chest. Sort of the head looks like a spider head on the end of a long neck, and these these arms are have claws on the end along with my feet, so I can climb, uh, you know, onto the stick onto the wall. Sort of like a a spider with actually with two arms and two legs. So whichever way they go, I'm just going to follow on the wall. As you come down to the south and come around to this wide, 25 foot wide hallway, you see three single doors on your left. They aren't as fancy as the performance hall doors, but they aren't plain either. Instead of being carved, they are ornately painted in a fashion that complements the fancier doors. The first one you come to is labeled concessions box office. The next is beverage storeroom, and the third is manager's office. Beyond that are a set of double doors that are smaller than the front performance hall doors, but otherwise look the same, and are also labeled performance hall. Just past that, the hallway narrows down to 10 foot wide. There are a set of painted doors across from each other labeled male and female privies, and down the hall from that is a single, plain, wooden door called staff area. The light is dimmer there at the very end of the hallway. Ah, it's a back entrance. Let's go on the staff. Staff entrance. No, no, no. We are uh, supposed to find the manager, huh? Is that... Oh. Yeah? Okay. Manager's office? The constable gave us uh, his name, huh? Maybe he's in his office? Cowboy ring under the desk, I imagine. I'm afraid to touch the door or someone else do it. Hey, uh, Nanda! <laughs> Speaking of Nanda, are you still on the wall? Uh, as soon as Jacques yells at me, I'll start coming down the wall. But I am, yes, I'm probably 30 foot up onto the wall if, if it's still this high. Give me a dex save as you fall and transform back into your gnome shape. That would be a 15. Nimble. You mostly land on your feet, but you have a little bit slightly twisted ankle. You take three points of damage. All right. Oh, oh that was my... That was my bad ankle anyway, so I won't <laughs> notice. <laughs> <laughs> Nanda, that was scary. I didn't like you shooting webs out your butt. I tell you what, climbing on the, on the, on the wall is, 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 is fun. I like it. We're going into the manager's office. You try the door first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think this might qualify as senior abuse. <laughs> <laughs> this is elder abuse. Elder abuse, yeah. So I'll walk up to this one. Is it a metal handle? I mean, is it is that like a push? Is it a is it the same type of handle that was on the last door that gave me the problem? No, it's a much plainer handle on this door. I'll I'll take my dagger out and I'll tap it. Nothing happens. Tap it twice. Nothing happens, and then nothing happens. Oh, I like that rhythm. Keep going. We can make a song out of it. I'll tap it three or four times and shake my head a little bit when the I do it. Manager's door. Yeah. No, All right. Yeah, I put my yeah. dagger back in, and I just grab onto it and open it. And it opens. Huzzah! This is a small room. It's 15 by 15. Taking up almost the entire back northern wall is a large mahogany desk facing the door. There is an ostentatious nameplate reading Lucas Pavoli, displayed front and center. A burning candle on the desk illuminates the room just enough to see two filing cabinets on opposite walls and a very dead corpse of a human man sitting behind the desk. Found him! Oh, it's Pavoli! <laughs> hey, Nanda, you outlived someone, huh? Yeah, yeah he, he doesn't look like he aged well. <laughs> Congratulations! Maybe you can steal his pills. They're expensive. He's human, though. They die off pretty quick. Uh, so I walk in the room. <laughs> I follow. I want to, yeah, I want to look around the room. I would like to take his name, pl his name plate. Okay. I would like to look in the filing cabinet. It, nobody's been in here for three days and that candle's still burning. That's a good candle. I grab it and blow it out. It does not blow out. Oh, wonderful. Is it, is it hot? Nope. <gasps> I, I... I'm keeping this. It's a Nunda proof candle. I love it. Oh, I wish I would have had those for my babies on their birthday cakes back in the day. <sighs> What's in this file cabinet? Uh, give me an investigation check. 17. 
you'll find income and payment receipts of the opera house. Um, how much time are you going to spend looking through all this? I actually think Pam would be quite interested in all the hot goss, knowing who's making what money in the opera, <laughs> being okay. on the music scene herself. Okay, well, you see different stars listed, um, and they make upward of 50 gold per performance. And the chorus, that they only make about five silver per, per, per performance. The Opera House, it looks like it takes in a net of 500 gold per sold-out show. And as you keep reading through all this and you're looking through all of it, you can tell Lucas Pavoli has been skimming off the top of the profits for years. Ah, guys, Lucas, he's been skimming money. You see um, Annalise's. Headshot and a list of acrobatic training received from Tasha's kiss. Hey, uh, it looks like I was correct, huh? There is a murder, and now we have a motive! How do you know he didn't die of natural causes? <laughs> I'm not too sure about that, Nanda. What, what looks like, what's his body, I mean, what's it, what's it describing? Check him out, you can see that he indeed broke a leg. You see his what? right femur, <laughs> the bone sticking out of it, and there's a pool of blood, dried blood, all on the floor, all right around him. He looks like he broke a leg and then died from blood loss. It looks like he was acting too hard. What irony? Wow. Who would do this to someone? Oh, it's just a figure of speech. He may be as a dirty, dirty thief, huh? But I appreciate the dedication. What's in his desk drawer? I open it up. You find a bottle of ink, an ink pen, uh, some sheets of parchment, and a small knife. I take the ink out. I sort of hold it up to the candlelight. It's cheap, but it'll work. And I put it in my bag and, and take the, the pen. I, I, feel, I feel take everything out of this. Out of there. You don't need these anymore. You want to give me an investigation check? 22. With the 22, you can also discovered that there is a hidden compartment in that drawer. You pull out the false bottom and you find 200 gold pieces and a ledger showing a balance of 500 gold pieces with a note that says stored in treasure chest. Oh, I'll lay the bag up on the desk and read that. Looks like there's uh, five, 500 gold pieces in a treasure chest. So, is there a treasure chest around here somewhere? Did you say treasure chest? I did. I tried there in words. Oh, we gotta find this treasure. I mean, we gotta save the opera. Well, I mean, we're not thieves. I don't think we should take the money. And I put it back in the drawer. Right. Uh, but we were told to seek out Lu Lucas Pavoli. Why? What do we do now, guys? Booch, you smell anything? He smells pretty ripe. I'm not sure... I'm going to be able to talk to this fella. Uh, it, it's a dead end. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I slap Nanda on the back and chuckle as well. Oh, oh. It, it smarted <laughs> a, a bunch bit of there. bones creak. Oh, <laughs> sorry, little buddy. Uh, You're kind of uh, bony around the edges. A, yeah, you get that way when you when you get my age. You got anything I can rub on the shoulder? I probably could uh, concoct something. Uh, just give me a second or two. All right. Uh, all right. You said there's two file cabinets or one? Two. Can I look at the other one? Or are they the same thing? But, uh, there's just, um, if you're looking at both of them, that's how you find all the information that you found. Okay. Is there anything else in the room, guys? Like, we need more clues. <sighs> you know... Pamela, I remember when, before uh, Nanda came along, I used to be Butch's little buddy, huh? Oh, oh, don't feel Jacques. bad, Jacques. You know I love you. Like a son, come here. I have lots of little buddies, little buddy. Oh, Butch, that just twists the dagger. Oh. <laughs> but that was supposed to make you feel better. <sighs> I have to get out of this room. I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna flail into the hallway. Do we want to go get some snacks for the journey, or should we just see if the staff door is open? Booch, uh, Booch would like to investigate if there's anything 
on his purse on this guy's uh, person. Okay, so you're looking in his coat pockets. You find a letter that says, Miss Annalise Penn. The Le Leon Opera House establishes itself as a venue of esteem and regality. Under no circumstances do we tolerate the distrib- distribution of vile media. Your proposed stage play, Revenge, dot dot dot, is preposterously out of touch with our clientele and producti- production team. Performing such a show would tarnish the Le Leon's Opera House's name. After consulting other Levlion Opera House employees and performers, I've determined that the Levlion Opera House no longer has needed your services in the dance ensemble. You have until the end of the day to vacate your belongings and turn in any costumes, makeup, and accessories you may have been using. I never want to see another copy of your revenge script again. I will also blacklist the Tasha's Kiss performing company that you received your, in quotes, training from. Regards, Lucas Pavoli. Uh, so Annalise killed him. It certainly does seem like good motive. I bet you she was mighty upset. Oh, uh, Diaz is, uh, this Lucas sure likes, uh, <laughs> right out La Volion, huh? <laughs> it's everywhere! La Volion, La Volion, La Volion. Is that how you say it, Jack? <laughs> pretty good, Babala! What, what happened to the other 200 people, then? Plus. Uh... uh Maybe they were part of this uh, revenge script, huh? Maybe we can find a copy of it. I would like to get in the performance hall. Hey, let's go to the stage. That seems like a like a place where our actors would hang out. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Let's go. <laughs> Little. Do we want to <laughs> go to the concessions for snacks first, or no? I mean, I am always a little bit peckish, huh? I'm a fan of the peanut brittle. There's always a good peanut brittle at the opera. Mmm, that sounds tasty. That does not make any sense. It's a thing. Trust me, I'm a bard. No, I know these things. It is very loud. Yeah, it's a super crunchy, super satisfying, salty, and sugary snack. I am not. <laughs> I'm not arguing how tasty peanut brittle is, but <laughs> to eat peanut brittle as a place, that makes no sense. It's far too It's loud. a thing, Jacques. How no, many operas no, no, have no, you no, seen? No. You must have uh, performed at some of these uh, backwater venues. Huh? So just I didn't say out. I was performing. I definitely was watching, but okay. Oh, so maybe she was the only one pulling out the brittle from your little purse, eating it, disrupting the performance. Why would the concession sell? Okay, I can't argue right now. I walk out of the office. And now I am craving peanut butter. Let's go, Susie. Goddamn concession. I'm I'm going to open the door to concessions and try. I'm taking the candle and hitting it against the wall to see if it goes out. <laughs> Just to check in to see what kind of magic it is. And then I turn around and see everybody's walked out of the room. Can you give me an arcana check on your candle? 13. Y- you know it's enchanted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I put it down, I put it back in my bag, and then I, I follow everybody. I, I really paid no attention to what they were talking about. So you walk into the door for the concessions box office. It's a 20 by 30 foot room that has a counter that wraps around the front and south side. On the counter near the large front window is an ornate golden cash register with mother of pearl inlaid buttons. Next to that's a roll of tickets. There's a bl- black pot-bellied cast iron stove that sits in the back corner and a giant pot of popping kernels sits on the floor next to it. In the middle of the northern wall is a small plain door. I don't see any peanut brittle here, Pam. I it might be in the cupboard here and I'll, I want to, uh, can I get around the counter or I have to climb over it? You can go in the door. You know, I do like peanuts. What a shame. I'll fill up my purse with popcorn. Uh, it's cur- there is no popped popcorn or oh, kernels. Oh, crap. Mm. Kernels, and it looks like the pop belly stove is set up that you can pop the corn- kernels on it. We don't have time to pop corn, guys. This... Maybe just a couple kernels? The door that goes out the back end, uh, does it open if I try? Booch is going to shuffle over, hoping that Pam doesn't notice, um, and he wants to put a few kernels into the kernel popper. Uh, you're going to pop some kernels? You have a way to light up the stove? Amanda does. <laughs> um, I think I do. Oh, maybe I don't. I thought I had a... 
Oh, I have I have uh, frostbite and chill touch. Would those work? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you you can if you look underneath the counter, you see there's a stack of firewood, and if you were to walk over there, you see there's also a tinder box there. Pam, inside the closet, you can see a crate with paper popcorn bags and a whole bunch of uh, drinking steins. And peanut brittle? I'm sorry, no peanut brittle. I turn around. I see Booch holding wood and putting it under the stove. We don't have time. You know, Pam, sometimes you just have to stop to smell the kernels popping. Why, why, why would they sell popcorn in a in a theater? It would make too much noise. Not as much noise as peanut brittle. Okay, I'm gonna try the staff entrance. Who's coming with me? Let's oh, go. Oh, I mean, we already have the fire going. Just wait for the kernels. Huh? You guys are driving me crazy. I'm waiting for the popcorn. It will only take a moment. I make the best popcorn you'll ever taste, Pam. What? Uh, do you, what special things do you do to it, huh? Well, I put the kernels over top of the heat, and then I wait. Sacrebless revolutionary, huh? The trick is to not wait too long. Then they I'll burn. just, okay, so like you, it's gonna be a minute, so I'll just go jiggle the handle and see if it's locked. That's all. Pop, 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 pop. You know what, Jacques? You've given me an idea. I keep uh, I keep some some snacks on me at all times, and I've got some um, some peanuts and some dried cranberries. And I'm going to um, kind of try and crunch them between my my big turtley hands, and sprinkle that in as well. Did you wash your hands? <laughs> when you're out. Adventuring in the bush, do you wash your hands before you eat? Sometimes yes, you just have always. to live life wild. Your mom did not teach you right. And I and I walk past them. I'm going out to check the handle of the staff entrance. The door's locked. Frick, guys, the door's locked! Uh, I hate this place, huh? Can anyone pick a lock? Well, well. For, first, before we pick the lock, we need to be well fed. Come, come, have some some popcorn. There's no rush. All of this popcorn huh, is gonna make us very thirsty. <laughs> we may as well check the last room. Maybe there is a key in there. Huh? Are you gonna open the door to the beverage store? I guess I'll open the door finally. <laughs> 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 Actually, this door's locked too. Sorry. Not anymore. Ah. We've seen it. <laughs> you can't. You can't take that back. Looks like no freaking barrels. Backsies. Okay. Jock can open locked doors. <laughs> well, I uh, appreciate the vote of confidence, huh, Nanda? But I, I can try. Yeah, you, you put something in the hole there, and you turn it. Uh, yes, thank you. I am familiar with the concept of picking a lock, huh? Uh, uh, one of my many talents happens to be, uh, roguish activities. Oh, yeah, same. You were teaching me, but you haven't t- taught me locks yet. <laughs> well, it's very advanced stuff, huh? It takes, it takes someone, uh, you know, years and years of training, not just to willy, willy, nilly into a new, uh, type of profession, and then they can say that they're uh, this profession. No, 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 no. <laughs> Only a fool would be to, uh, to claim this as much. And I, I'll try to pick this line. I am proficient with these tools. Okay. I mean, I guess technically I am too for taking two levels of rogue, but... Uh, that is a 19. Oh, yeah, you swiftly and deftly unpick or pick this lock and unlock it and open the door. Ha! <laughs> I am the best rogue there's ever been. <laughs> Which door did you unlock? Obviously, it's the beverage one! You unlocked the wrong door! Oh, I unlock one, I can unlock two! Duh. Jacques, come unlock it! Oh wait, well, let's see what's in here first, huh? The popcorn must almost be ready! I'd say the popcorn's ready by now. Yes, it's ready. Inside this 15 by 15 foot room are stacked casks of ales and bottles of wine. Okay, fine, Mom will take a bottle for later, tucks it in her purse. <laughs> Twist my arm. 
Mondays, am I right? I mean, uh, Jacques is going to get one of the drinking steins and uh, fill up and have some popcorn. I will definitely get a bottle of wine and look, check the date. Ah, yeah. yeah I, I remember that year. <laughs> mm-hmm. Grapes grapes were, 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 were good that year, I think. I, I have to t- test it out here. The label says Lavalion Burgundy Wine. Mm, I take a big swig. Ever wanted to turn down a good wine? Great wine is the best you've ever had. This will go great with popcorn. Somebody want to give me an investigation check in this room? I mean, no, no I I found my drink. <laughs> Booch is still tending to the popcorn. He doesn't want it to burn. I'll investigate. 19. One of the bottles looks a little different from all the rest of them. Okay, I'll pick it. I'll pick it up. It says Grady's hang- Hangover Cure. Oh. I'm going to tuck that one away, too. Okay, so Pan succumbs to sitting around and eating popcorn instead <laughs> of working. What do you guys think of the popcorn? I think the cranberry goes great with the wine, personally. <laughs> That's very good, Bucci. Oh, I'll just cram a handful in, drink my drink, and I'll go down and try to unlock the staff door. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll follow Jacques. I'll I'll just carry my bottle with me. Take it a swig as we go. Ah, uh, that's a good boy, Jacques. So Bucci will go into the uh, the room with all the drinks, take a look around, see if anything catches his eye. Casks of ale and bottles of wine. Yeah, I think Booch will grab a bottle of wine as well. That sounds good. Um, I got a 25 this time to try to unlock the staff door. It is just a plain wooden door, nothing special to it, and you easily unlock it. Pamela, we're in. Ah, yes, let's hope it leads to all the people that are missing. Good job, little buddy. You go first. <laughs> Booch, when you say that, like, Jacques perks up like almost like instinctively and then like kind of like sags down a little bit doesn't say anything back <laughs> i i didn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> i uh, tell you what uh jack will jack will just march right into the staff okay door. that was creepy <laughs> that was creepy <laughs> I tell you what. Uh. <laughs> That's how angry he was. <laughs> he became a pirate. <laughs> when Jock gets angry, he speaks Grimby's pirate. Not a pirate. He's already he's already five classes. Why not add pirate to the mix? This backstage area is much plainer than where the patrons would be. You see worn wooden floors, sparse lighting, and plain walls in this narrow hallway. Path goes straight for several feet, then turns north for a couple feet, and then turns east. Along the southern wall are four plain wooden doors, with another one 50 foot down at the end of the hall. The rooms have small handwritten signs on them. First one is Costume Closet, the second one says Jacques Dressing Room, the next one is the Green Room, then there are male and female dressing rooms. Uh... Pamela, did you sign me up for some place that I do not remember, huh? I don't know, but our pictures are on the posters. Like, check out your dressing room. Uh, okay. <laughs> do you know any other Jacques? Uh, well, <laughs> any uh, any other Jacques by any other name would not be so sweet, huh? And yeah, I mean, I'll go right to my to my dressing room, or the dressing room that's labeled Jacques. Okay. I'll go in there with them, like right behind them or whatever. Inside is a small room with a mirror taking up the entire west wall. A small table is set against the east wall with a worn but comfortable looking chair. A plain wooden door is set into the middle of the southern wall. There is a rack on which is a set of fine clothes hanging nicely, along with spare whips, a stuffed dog that looks like it has been ridden, and a stack of books that all say, For Dummies on them for several different classes. Hey, these are my belongings, huh? This uh, is weird. My tr- my faithful childhood hound. Look at this uh, magnificent fabric on these clothes, huh? Oh, oh, fit for the court of my family. Stay in your armor, Jacques. Uh, 
Okay, but I would look damn good in this. We'll get it on the way out. Why is there a saddle on that dog? <laughs> well, so, so you can ride him, huh? Why else would you put a saddle on a dog? Oh, I got. I, I gotta try that out. I'm sorry, that is not for you. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. I sort of put my start putting my leg up on the. What? I can't. No. You, uh, nah, you will see defile his memory, huh? Uh, right. Well, okay. Just sort of walk back. I look a little bit upset, and I take another drink of wine. Look, uh, why don't you read uh, this book? Uh, and I'll pull up the Wizards for Dummies and hand you the book. Okay, I'll, I'll look at it. I'll, I'll be flipping the pages through really quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, I'll keep it. <laughs> oh, wait, I have, I've only gotten to Chapter 2. I have not got very far. I, I don't... You, you know when you're... You, you can't just give this to anybody. Well, then I will give it to no one. No, I mean, it, it, in the wrong hands, this could cause minor damage. I uh, have caused <laughs> quite a bit more than minor damage in my time, hmm. huh? I'll lay it on the Do saddle. Do I have a room? And, like, Pam walks out to the hall looking for the room that says Pam's dressing room. None of the rooms say Pam's. Okay, well, I keep opening every door I see to check and see if it's my dressing room. Which door <laughs> are you opening first? Uh, the next one. What's that one? We'll have to open it and find out. Well, there's no sign. There is a, oh, sorry. Yes, there is a sign. <laughs> <laughs> you have lost the ability to read, Pamela. <laughs> you must open the door to find out. It says costume closet. I don't want to mess with the costume closet. I want Pam's dressing room, so I'll go the other way and open the next door. The next door says green room. Yeah, I'll go in the green room. Pam thinks, well, green's my favorite color. Maybe that's my room. This is a comfortable room. Two couches sit on either side of a low coffee table laden with all kinds of fruit, cake, pies, and beverages. The walls are painted a pleasant shade of green-gray, and the light is lowered to a level that's easy on the eyes. The food on the table appears to be several hours old. Not bad, but not good either. But as you're looking at it, you feel a slight energy wave. And all of the wilted pieces are revived and look fresh again. There is a large Italian wedding cake at the head of the table. Pies of all kinds, apple, cherry, peach in the middle. Four baguettes are lined up on either side of the edges of the table, with small fruits like cranberries, strawberries, and roasted peanuts at the foot of the table. Oh, there's no peanut brittle, but it's my Italian wedding cake. I love it. It's my favorite. Oh, and I'm going to go uh, lick some frosting. Stick my <laughs> finger. So you can hear Booch coming down the hallway going... <laughs> Sniffing, sniffing. Whoa, oh my! What, 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 what did you find, Pam? My favorite Italian wedding cake. Italian wedding cake? No, I, I smell. Oh, these peanuts look like they've had a fantastic treatment, roasted to perfection, and dried cranberries to go with them. What more could you ask for? Jacques, there's baguettes. Ah. Huh? My goodness, uh, I will be right there, and I will just give uh, my dog Skip. What did I name him? Skip. How do you say this? Skip, Skip Sternicus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Skip Sternicus. It's on name. Skip Sternicus. I'll give him a pat, and then go and uh, look for the baguettes. When he leaves the room, I'm going to sit there for a second, and then I'm going to get on the dog. Does <laughs> <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> Just for a minute, and then if, if nobody comes back, I'll get off and go, hey, what wasn't all cracked up to what I thought it would be. That's it. That's all we have for you. That's our show. Be sure to follow us on the social media. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's all on the website, incorrigibleparty.com. You get all kinds of information there. Incorrigible Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design, you know. And all ambient sounds and music during the episodes are courtesy of TabletopAudio.com. And our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can, you can find him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Now scram. Happy adventuring.